Okay, uh, next up is John. I'll talk about security. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm John. I've been, uh, I got involved with Grand shortly before launch, then uh, I've been able to help with some of the security audits. Uh, so I'm just going to talk a little bit today about uh, Grand security, what we've been doing, and uh, what work is thought to be done. Uh, so the uh, security disclosure process has been upgraded fairly recently through the new RFC process. The motivation there was to make the process more clear uh, so that during the disclosure process, all parties have uh, a clear understanding about what to expect. This saves time on the uh, developer side, so there's kind of less chaos when a disclosure comes in, and it saves uh, time and hassle on the researcher end, so they're not confused and frustrated when they're going through the disclosure process. Um, the standard that was adopted uh, is a, a standard. Uh, it was originally created by Zcash in response to a, a major security incident they had, uh, and it took into account uh, some previous Bitcoin incidents and Zcash incidents, and uh, it was an effort to create a, a more comprehensive security disclosure standard for the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Uh, and with that, there's a mechanism for by disclosure agreements in cryptocurrency when we have a lot of uh, open source uh, code reuse and uh, several implementations of the same thing with different marketing. Uh, you can have vulnerabilities that impact a lot of users. Uh, so we care about the security of all users, uh, and so we want to uh, have mechanisms like this so that we can uh, make sure to catch both the vulnerability that's caught uh, in some other projects and, and bring it into great users and to propagate something that's found for Grim uh, into other projects. There's a few open problems that are not answered yet uh, with this uh, security process uh, in its current state. There's no mechanism for bug bounties. Uh, a bug bounty program requires a fair amount of hands-on activity and long-term dedicated funding. and uh, Grin really just isn't quite there yet to, in good faith, manage a bug bounty program that isn't going to upset researchers on delayed responses and that kind of thing. So uh, there's some ongoing work to do there. And uh, of course, there's centralization risk. And the uh, current setup, the disclosures are, uh, the vulnerabilities are sent to the disclosure contacts. And uh, in some other projects, it's just sent to one security app. So we have a little bit more decentralization by breaking it up to each individual contact. But at the end of the day, uh, it's going to centralized persons. So uh, there can be some work done there. Uh, and with bug disclosures to make that less uh, centralized, but that requires uh, violating the premise and most uh, principle by bringing things on chain. So uh, that's just going to be uh, ongoing work and conversation there. And uh, finally, we don't have a clear way yet to handle high-level specification vulnerabilities that would be like in the white paper. Uh, and, and making sure that propagates to other projects that might be implementing that specification. Uh, so a quick review of the security audit that got published, if you didn't get a chance to read all the details, uh, CoinSpecs is the firm that worked on the audit, and they basically covered uh, most of the green code that wasn't in the first audit, which was the crypto library. So uh, this is the, the core code, the chain, keychain create, and wallet create. And I had an asterisk by the wallet because since that audit was done, there's been a lot of refactoring in the wallet. It's been moved out to its own repo, and it's probably due for another audit. The, uh, what was done is probably less relevant now. Uh, the timeline, it took about two months to raise the funds there, and uh, CoinSpec began in February, they, uh, right as they started, they found a CVE and uh, disclosed it. I'm going to go into the details of that a little bit more. Um, March through July was the timeline of when the Grand Development team had all of the reported issues and uh, worked on the fixes and got those implemented into the code base. And then August through September was the remediation verification period where the uh, auditors CoinSpec made sure that all the fixes were accurate. There's obviously uh, some improvement to be desired in the timeline there. Uh, hopefully in the future we can uh, tighten that up by uh, assigning all the issues that come in straight away to developers and following through with that to make that a more reasonable turnaround. Uh, 
uh, overview of the findings, uh, not a high volume of findings, but the findings themselves were pretty decent quality. It's uh, results that I would hope to get back from a grant audit. There's not tons of things coming back. Um, and the quality of the things were able to improve the code base. Uh, so, just a general overview of the issues found. The directory traversal is related to the CVE, which I'm going to talk about specifically. Uh, there are some cases, uh, we obviously use uh, C-Roaring for uh, bitmap serialization, and uh, that is a third-party dependency. There were some uh, vulnerabilities there. The short-term mitigation is to make sure that we're using the latest version of the third-party library, keeping an eye on everything, making sure that uh, any security issues come up there, we, we catch and bring in with us. Long term, it's uh, probably uh, rewriting the library in Rust or uh, finding a way to not to not need that dependency. Uh, there were uh, some some cases where the peer-to-peer -peer logic, uh, the inbound and outbound connections were distinguished in the Dandelion implementation, but the rules around how many are allowed and uh, kind of defining and understanding the, uh, the distinction there between the connections uh, needed some work. Uh, the, the result of, of not having those fixes in were mostly denial of service. Um, and then a case of insufficient validation with orphan blocks where uh, orphan blocks can be scanned really cheaply uh, and doesn't have a huge impact but uh, needed to be cleaned up all the same. So. Uh, in fact, generally denial of service, data corruption, in the case of the CVE, uh, actually remote code execution, which is important, and that's what I'm going to talk about head now. Uh, so within a few days of the disclosure, uh, a fix was put out, and then the nodes, uh, or the exchanges in the mining pools were notified that it was a security fix, and then the community is notified a few days later. Um, there was not a mechanism to force users to upgrade. Uh, the hard work was that, uh, but the security uh, notice was released and uh, we got a safe amount of notice to upgrade. Uh, the vulnerability itself is what's called a zip slip. Uh, it is a directory traversal vulnerability. So in the case of Gram, um, a malicious node could craft a zip file uh, with special directory traversal instructions and a vulnerable node would uh, take that zip file and extract it where in whichever directory uh, the zip file told it to. Um, and so without proper sanitization, um, a malicious node could potentially uh, have, a, have a victim node extracting and, and running arbitrary code. And so that was a, a very uh, critical issue and uh, we're glad it was fixed quickly. Um, the fix itself is just sanitizing the, uh, the path and skipping anything that doesn't uh, need that, and then uh, filtering the uh, actual data itself against the expected data and, and whitelisting there. Uh, so the fix itself was fairly simple. Um, the, the vulnerability was, was pretty low complexity. Um, it wasn't some super sophisticated uh, fix that required a PhD. It was found uh, pretty quickly, but it was one of those ones that had a really high impact of remote code execution. Um, and so fortunately, the, we had an audit lined up before Grand launch, and it was done shortly afterward. And we had this fix not too long after uh, Grand was live. And it's a perfect example of why security audits are important. Uh, this would be uh, someone who is, is trying to disrupt or hack. Uh, it's, it's ideal for them because it's pretty easy to find. It's kind of floating fruit. It has a super high impact, and it's really cheap to carry out. Just get a few tools to manipulate your zip files and you're off the basis. Uh, so overall we got some good quality results. They, uh, the, code, the code quality was able to be improved as a result. Uh, so you know, we can say those things went well. The timeline of course could be improved on. Uh, next time we want to have a much shorter turnaround from when the developers receive any vulnerabilities that were disclosed and, and when the, the fixes are pushed out and ultimately bring the uh, transparency with the community timeline up even closer. Uh, the, the wait time was a little extreme uh, in, the, in that case for the community. And then as far as whether this kind of thing was worth it, that's a question for the people who contributed to the first round of security funding and to subsequent, uh, subsequent rounds of security funding, whether uh, the results that were produced in this work uh, was a good value for them. 
Uh, and then we have a question of sustainability, which is kind of an ongoing uh, question with grant security. Security is an ongoing thing, it's an ongoing cost, and uh, we, there's not really a model yet for them to uh, facilitate that and, and make that real. So uh, that's an ongoing topic. A new security repo was created fairly recently to house kind of in, all, in one place all the security related information for GREM. It contains uh, PGP keys, uh, canaries, uh, signatures with that, so it's really easy to uh, clone that repository and import keys and verify everything there. Uh, any CVEs that would come out are issued uh, in that repository as well as any results from any GREM audits. So if you have uh, general interest, you can find all the information there. Uh, and there's a link at the end of my talk. So finally, future work. Uh, we want to continue to build on what we got from the new security disclosure process. Uh, we want to take advantage of those bilateral disclosure agreements and uh, really kind of bolster that in the ecosystem. Uh, even if it's, uh, you know, we, I want to encourage other uh, grant projects and the ecosystem to look at the standard even if you're not sharing code with grant itself. If you're wallets that are maybe sharing code with each other, you can adopt the standard and then share vulnerabilities with each other. Uh, and that makes your code more secure and it makes your users more secure. Uh, we've been uh, with HashMap and Daniel exploring a little bit some security tooling, uh, some fuzzing tools and some other tools like that to run automated security testing that might be done in, a, in an audit on the code so that uh, we can save ourselves some time and money and maybe some headache there and eventually it would be nice to have it integrated uh, so when you guys submit a new pull request, the fuzzing tool runs and uh, we have an extra layer of security there. Uh, I mentioned before sustainability work, that's just kind of an ongoing problem uh, and it deserves more attention. Uh, so, so big picture, when we're talking about grant security, we want grant to be secure for the users who are using it in the real world. and. Uh, you know, one of the critical aspects of that is privacy and usability awareness. If you have something, you know, very secure, um, but there's an option that's much easier for a user that's not secure, uh, the user's probably going to do that and then get upset that they, they're not secure. So we need to be really conscious about making the secure options we do offer usable, um, and then awareness of, of privacy because that, that fits into security and we want to make it clear to the user who's using REN what level of, of privacy to expect and how that kind of fits in with their threat model. Okay, uh, that's it. That's the link to the grand security repo.